Hi, I'm Norm Abram. Welcome to the New Yankee Workshop. Today we're going to do something a little different. We're going to design and build a playhouse for children. It's something you can build in the workshop and then take it and set it out in the yard. In a moment, we'll take a visit to a playhouse being used by some children. Then we'll come back here and build our version right here in the New Yankee Workshop. The New Yankee Workshop features the craftsmanship of Norm Abram. It turns out that finding good examples of children's playhouses was not an easy thing to do. We were just about to give up when we heard about this one. It was actually constructed by Mennonite craftsmen somewhere in the Midwest and then delivered to this site. It's a nice size, about 10 feet deep and 8 feet wide, a wood shingle roof, novelty siding. This is kind of unusual, an arched window, including the shutters. Some uh, window boxes, a Dutch door with the Z-brace detail. They even went through the trouble to put a screen door on. Now inside, it's quite nice pickled pine, and a set of bunk beds. I understand that the children actually sleep out here in the summer. I don't know if we'll go to quite this much detail. This is going to be fun to build. I've designed our playhouse on paper. Those plans, including a materials list, will be available. And you'll hear more about that before this program ends. Before we get started, I want to take a moment to talk about shop safety. Be sure to read, understand, and follow all the safety rules that come with your power tools. Knowing how to use your power tools properly will greatly reduce the risk of personal injury. And remember this, there is no more important safety rule than to wear these safety glasses. We're going to get started with the largest element of the playhouse, the floor platform. The frame is made from 2x6 pressure treated lumber. The inside of the playhouse will be covered with plywood, and the porch will get square edge fur. The first thing I want to do is cut the floor joist. I need four more cut to the same length. These two eight-foot pieces make the rim joist. Well, now let's nail it together. The joists are on two-foot centers. This line is for a row of blocks that'll support the front wall of the playhouse. This row of blocks will support the joint in the plywood floor. Notice that they're only two by fours. For the floor, I'm using some half inch CDX plywood. And I'm gonna nail it in place with some six penny ring shank galvanized nails because they really hold. Now you can see how those blocks are going to support the edges of the plywood. The front porch floor will be this square edge fur, and I'll nail it in place with some six penny galvanized finish nails. This floor platform is a great place to lay out and pre-fit all the pieces for the walls. This is one of the gable end walls. The cuts down at the eave here are simple 45 degree angles, as well as the cut at the peak and at the tops of the studs. This large opening is the main window. This small opening is for an attic window, even though we really don't have an attic floor. Now all I have to do is nail it up. Before I remove the frame from the platform, I want to side it. So I've tacked it in place so it can't move around 
and I'm applying our choice of siding, which is this one by six tongue and groove red cedar. I'll nail it in place by putting a six penny finish nail right in the tongue area. This way most of the nails will not show. I'm trimming off the excess cedar using a flush trimming bit. Okay, let's build another one. The back wall has no windows in it, so we can go right ahead and side it. That's all the walls I want to build on the floor platform. We'll move both of them aside. Oh, well, good morning. I had some of my friends come over this morning before they went to work and help me set the platform out here on some concrete blocks. It's more or less level. It'll give us a place to assemble the rest of the playhouse. The next thing I want to do is build the front wall. But since it's bigger than the plywood platform, I'm going to build it on the shop floor. Nothing fancy about the cuts on this wall. They're all 90s. got enough of this wall nailed together that I can show you the layout. This is the bottom of the wall. This large, tall opening is for the door. Over here, there's a large window. And up at the top, there's going to be a little bit of a dormer. And this will form one of the dormer windows. There'll be another one over here. Let me show you how that was made. I have some 3 quarter inch blocks that space the header 2 by 4 down to form the top of the opening. And at the bottom, I've nailed two pieces together in the shape of an L, which forms the bottom of the window opening and gives me this flat block, which will be a backer where the porch roof slope will meet it. Well, now I think it's time to set the four walls on the deck and attach everything with screws. I'm using screws because I want to be able to take it apart later.
All right, let's get the back wall. So that I can prefabricate the roof panels in the shop, I've made some samples of the various pieces. It's gonna be a plate that goes on top of the wall we already built. The rafter will have a notch at the bottom, which fits over that. And at the top, I have a double angle piece. One angle will sit on top of the wall, and the other one matches the pitch of the roof, and that'll act as a ridge beam. Now that they fit okay, I can use them as patterns to cut the rest of the pieces. The ridge is first, and I'll cut it from this piece of two by eight, making 45 degree angle cuts. Here's where the pattern comes in. I can use it to set the saw fence. Let's start cutting the rafters. First, the ridge cut at 45 degrees. Now at the other end of the rafter, I'm gonna make the cut with a circular saw and finish it with a hand saw. Around here, it's called a crow's foot. Okay, that's 13. We'll start by building the rear roof first. Here on the sawhorses, I've set up the ridge pole and the bottom plate. I've nailed together two of the rafters that I just cut to go right on the end. What I want to do is bring them up so the top of the rafter and the top of the ridge are flush, then I can nail them together. The roof sheathing is half inch CDX plywood and I'll attach it with inch and a half staples. You'll notice that on each side of the dormer wall I'm going to need a little section of roof. It's only 12 inches wide. That's what I'm building next. Well, once again, saved by the help of a neighbor with a night job. This panel is a little bit too much for one person to handle. Great, thanks a lot, Hugh. No nails, just screws. I want to be able to take this apart later. And here's how the little roof goes on.
I've just spent a few minutes cutting a test rafter for the shed dormer roof. And if it fits okay, I'll be able to use it as my pattern. And that looks good. First, I'll cut the ridge. The angle is 22 and a half degrees. This piece of two by four will also be ripped at a 22 and a half degree angle. And that piece will tie the lower end of the rafters together. Just as with the other roof sections, the end rafter will be a double rafter. But on this roof, the outer rafter has to be cut to conform to the pitch of that small roof that I've already installed. posts that support the porch roof are next, and they fit into the corner of the deck frame. They have to be notched. Let me show you how I did that. To do the layout, I'm just using my combination square, set it inch and a half. And once all the marks are made, I just want to mark the material to be removed, which in this case is this area. And I'll do it with my circular saw. Okay, that's that. And that takes care of the middle post. As you can see, this porch roof is very similar to the shed roof above in that the pitch is exactly the same. Well, 
that's done, okay, see how this fits, pretty good. I'll fasten this in place with some screws, and then I can think about the trim, but we're losing light, so that can wait till tomorrow. Well, I've been moving right along on the trim this morning, but I wanted to take some time to show you the various elements. Here underneath the porch is a piece of one by six that I've mitered on both the side and front piece to cover up the pressure treated lumber. That just gets attached with some screws. Now here at the corners of the playhouse where the siding meets, I want to cover this over with what's known as a corner board. It started out as a piece of one by six. I ripped one strip three inches wide and one strip two and a quarter inches wide, fastened them with stainless steel nails at the corner so that I end up with a three inch by three inch corner. It slips in underneath the rake board and over the deck and I'll attach that with some screws. Let me show you how I trimmed out the gable end. I have a one by six rake board, and down at the end, there's a plumb cut and a level cut. Up at the top where the two rake boards meet, they're cut at a 45 degree angle. Down here where the roof pitch changes from one to another, this angle is just a tad over 11 degrees. And down at the bottom, once again, I'll have a plumb cut and a level cut. Now there's one thing that I like to do is add another cleat, this one right here, a one and a half inch cleat known as a shingle cleat. And what it does is it gives me an additional shadow line, so it's more for architectural interest than anything else. Along the front edge of the roof to cover up the two by four, I'm going to install a fascia board which is a four and a half inch wide piece of pine. And the important thing here is to make sure that the front edge of the board is in the same line as the pitch of the roof, right about like that. With that complete, I'm ready to start shingling the roof. To give the plywood on the roof some additional protection from moisture, I've installed a layer of 15 pound tar paper. I stretched a chalk line from the face of the rake board on this end all the way to the rake board on this end to act as a guide for the butt end of the shingle, giving me the correct overhang. I also want to allow the shingle to overhang the rake board about three-eighths to a half inch. These shingles are western red cedar, and they're a grade called perfection. I want to secure them in place using some three-penny galvanized hot dip box nails. But because the shingle is only about three eighths of an inch thick where I'm going to be nailing, and the plywood is only a half inch thick, I'm going to have to trim the nails on this first course, otherwise they'll stick through. So just using lineman pliers, I'll cut them off. So I want to make sure that there's no chance of any nails sticking through that the children might bump into. The next shingle down the line, I don't want to butt it up tight. I want to hold it a minimum of an eighth and a maximum of a quarter inch between to allow expansion when they get wet. Now I'm going to move down to the other gable end and put a shingle on. And you might note that I only use two nails per shingle at all times. With this shingle installed, I'll just fill in between the two ends. With the starter course complete, I now will cover it with another course of shingles, making sure to bridge over the joints. And I like to hold the shingle down just about a sixteenth of an inch lower to let the water drip off. If 
For the second course, I'm going to tack a nail here four inches up from the bottom edge of the shingles so I can hook my chalk line on. Bring it down the other end. Mark my exposure again at four inches. And snap a line, which I'm going to use as a guide for a straight edge. which is just going to be this piece of three-quarter inch plywood. And I just want to tack it with a couple nails right to the line. Now that gives me a ledge onto which to set the shingles for the second course. I'll do the same procedure up the roof. Remember, I always have to keep in mind staggering the joints. Now at the intersection where the roof pitch changes and where we meet up with the vertical wall, I want to install some flashing. I'm using a six inch wide lead. Now just using a block of two by four, I'm going to form it. Now where the roof pitches change, I'm going to use a little wider piece of lead, an 8 inch piece, and I'm going to lay it up onto the other roof, tack it in place, and then I'm going to make sure it comes up onto the side wall, trim it out a bit, and bend it around the corner. Okay, that takes care of that corner. Now I can start running the shingles up this little side roof. With the starter course installed, I now have to flash where the side wall meets the roof. And that process is known as step flashing. So I start out with a piece of five by seven aluminum, which I bought at the lumberyard as step flashing. I want to bend it in half along the long dimension. So it's approximately 90 degrees, a 90 degree bend. Set it on the roof, shingle, and tack it to the side wall. Now I can place the shingles over it. Now this first full course, I'm going to extend down beyond the butt edge of the shingles underneath so that it'll help hold this flashing down, plus it'll look a lot better. After I install each course, I want to put in another piece of step flashing, making sure to hold it up high enough so it's just above the new course line. Well, that's the last of the tricky ones. The rest of the roof is completed using the same techniques you've already seen. Wood shingling the roof was a lot of fun, and it sure makes the playhouse look great. When all the shingles are installed, the last thing to do is put a cap over the ridge. There's one board that runs along the back and three pieces that run along the front, just lapped one over the other and nailed together, and the whole assembly is attached to the roof with some screws. Now down here on the side of the dormers, there's a little cheek wall. I pre-cut some pieces of siding and just glued the tongues and grooves together to make a little panel. The panel just slips in under the rake board and I attach it with some screws and then I put a little corner board just like the ones I made below to cover the corner. Well that takes care of the roof and the remaining pieces of trim. 
Now let's go in the shop and start working on that Dutch door that I mentioned earlier. Here on the workbench, I've set up the boards that I'm going to use to make the door. They're one by four square edge cedar with a V groove. I have seven boards spread out, which is the approximate width of the door. If I hook my tape on the groove side and measure out the finished width, which is 19 and a half inches, you can see I'm just going to have a little tiny piece of the groove edge of a board, and that's not good. So what I'm going to do is center the door on these pieces. If I take an inch and a half off of each edge board, that should do the job. To minimize splinters, I'm running the sawn edges through my benchtop joiner. These cleats will be used to hold the boards for the door together. The cleats are attached to the door boards with some one and a quarter inch galvanized bugle head screws in some pre-drilled holes. No glue because we have a cross grain situation. The cleats alone are not enough to support the door. I need a brace. And when the brace is installed, we get what is known as a Z brace. To lay out the brace, what I do is hold it flush to the edge of the cleat, both at the bottom and at the top. And to get the angle, I use my bevel gauge, which I can set by sliding it against the cleat and the brace piece, then bring it to the top, lay out the angle here and down here. Well, let's see what that angle is. Just a little under 45 degrees, about 44 and a half. That is going to be a very strong door. Now we're just going to chamfer all the edges. At the top of the lower door, I want to put a little shelf. And I have to mark it to make a notch so it'll clear the door jam. And to make sure there's no sharp corners, I'm going to use my compass to lay out a little radius. I'm installing the door using these galvanized T-hinges. Boy, the kids are going to have fun with this. When I install Z-braces on doors, I like to have the upper part of the Z-brace away from the hinge and have it angled down to meet the lower hinge. Now this little barrel bolt will secure the doors together. Now I can do the stops. 
The door frame and jam is made from a piece of one by six. First, I ripped a strip two and three quarters inches wide for the jam and connected it with a butt joint at the corner. The exterior casings are two inches wide and I reveal them back about one quarter of an inch. The head casing is also two inches wide and I'm gonna let the ends stick by three eighths on each end. Now let's see how this door jam fits. That's good. Now I'll just nail the casing into the siding and the jam into the two by fours. Now for a threshold, I took a piece of square edge fur and just beveled the edges and I'll just nail that in place. Now here's one of the window assemblies. Just slips in the opening. There's a window sill with a little molding under it to cover the joint in the opening. I have casings just like on the door and a jam. I also installed this set of mutton bars. I won't attach it in place right now. I want to paint it the final color. But let me show you how I made the window. The first thing to do is notch the window sill so that it'll fit into the frame opening. Next, I want to chamfer all the outside edges. Now I can attach the jam sides to the sill. Now the headpiece of the jam. Now the side casings. Once again, leaving about a quarter inch reveal on the jam. And now the head casing with the same overlap as the door. Now the little molding that goes under the sill. Here are the two mutton bars. I've laid out right along the center where I need to make a notch for a half lap and clamp them together so I can notch them both at the same time. little glue on each side of the joint and I'll pin them together with some three quarter inch brads and then route the edges. And I'm just going to hold the mutton flush with the inside and fasten it with some finish nails. Now even though the mutton pattern and the window dimensions may vary, all the rest of the windows are made the same way. Oh, good morning. I got started today doing some layout work for the railings of the porch. And the first thing I did is mill up some balusters. This is the new Yankee workshop and nothing gets thrown out. So I just happened to have some short pieces of redwood 
which I ripped and planed into one inch square blanks. Now since this project is going to be used by children, I think it's a good idea to round all the edges. So I've set up my router shaper table with a quarter inch round over bit to take care of that. These pieces are for the top rail. They're an inch and a half thick and two and a half inches wide, and I want to bevel the top to let the water run off. So I've set the saw at a 15 degree angle, and I'll run each edge through. Now for the bottom rails, I want to also bevel the edge, but I want to leave a wider flat spot in the middle for this piece of lattice, which is going to connect the balusters. The saw blade leaves a rough cut, which will be noticeable. So to solve that, I'm going to make a pass through my small joiner. Here's one of the railing assemblies. Let me show you how it goes together. The key to this baluster system is this little piece of lattice. I attach it to the balusters with a couple 3D galvanized box nails. Now we'll just flip it over and put the corresponding piece of lattice on the other end. Now I simply attach the baluster assembly to the rails I made earlier with some more of those galvanized box nails. Well, that looks great. Now I think we have just enough time to build a window box. The bottom of the window box needs a series of holes to provide for drainage. The leading edge of the bottom of the box is cut at a 15 degree bevel, and I did that at the table saw. The side of the box is also cut at a 15 degree angle that I did at the miter box. Both pieces are attached with some screws through pre-drilled holes. The front of the window box has its top edge beveled at 15 degrees, but I don't bother to bevel the bottom edge. The back is square cut, no bevels. All right. Well, I could go all day building little goodies for this playhouse, but I think it's time that I should get the paintbrush going. Okay, I think that takes care of everything that has to be primed. Now on all the trim, I'm going to be using a dark green latex paint. And on the body of the playhouse, I'm going to be using a latex stain that will be a camel or a golden color. A 
Well, now you start to get a sense of the finished color scheme. But I'm not going to know for sure if it really works until I move it to its final location and get some kids to play in it. Olivia, you making us a nice lunch today? All right. And Kayla, you're going to take care of feeding the baby. Molly's watering the plants. Sophie's cleaning up the yard. Everybody's doing a job around here. Boy, I sure wish I had one of these when I was a kid. <laughs>